snippet. Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven, Jesus speaking now, is describing the kingdom of heaven. He says, Like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard, he agreed to pay them a denarius. So you can say there was an agreement of how much would be paid for an entire day, sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out, saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. So they went. So he went out again at about noon, and about three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out, found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? And the guy said, because uh, no one's hired us, they answered. So he said to them, you also go work in my vineyard. When evening came, so obviously those dudes work long days. Eh? When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers, pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired, going on to the first. The workers who were hired at about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those who came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. And when they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who hired last worked only one hour, they said. You have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not, uh, am I not being, un I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Don't you, didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Behold, Jesus says, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Revelation 22 verse 12 to 13. Now, what you need to understand about this parable is it's so important to stay in your own race lane and mind your own business. Work out your own salvation fear and trembling a lot of people have an entitlement spirit and they say you know well you know i've been serving in this ministry for 20 years i deserve that leadership position and this person's been here for six months they got the position this is unfair but it's not your place it's not your house you're not in authority the guy who owns the land is the, you know you know what the golden rule is the golden rule is that you as the gold makes the rules you don't know what god is busy with in your life so when you look at other people and you see man that person's got a new car and they've got nice clothes and they've got a watch and they hardly do anything and here i am slogging and slaving every day and i've got nothing that's your race lane you got nothing to do with that person's life. You got nothing to do with who blesses them, whether it's God or man. Work on generating favor in your own life and God can bless you. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You stay in your race lane. Your battle is your battle. Your war is your war. Stay in my race lane. This is a race that I'm running. I've got a particular job. Every now and then I'll invite people to my race lane and say, listen, I've got cool strategies over here and often people say no no thank you and then I'm like that's fine that's cool man I let them run in their race lane I don't I don't uh, resent them for wanting to run in their race lane I, I'm not angry at them I, I, you understand don't worry about other people's race lanes and if people want to leave your race lane to go and join another race lane they are not your people it's up to them the master can choose who he pays, how much he pays, and the worker can choose who he works for. Someone's looking for a race lane where they fit. They don't fit into your church. They don't fit into your race lane. Now you want to go to a different race lane. And now you, you, you label them. That's wicked, man, you narcissist. They must commit to the kingdom of God and serve where God places the members of his body. It's such a cool uh, parable about the character of God. He's like, listen, you know. I'm going to forgive who I'm going to forgive and you can't tell me who I can forgive and who I can't. I'll show grace and I'll show mercy and you can't tell me who I can't show grace to and who I can't show mercy to. You know, you don't tell God who he can forgive and who he can help and, and, you, and you certainly don't do it to people you work for. And if people don't want to work for you, if people don't want to volunteer with you, 
I could realize, okay, either I'm not being clear about my race lane, not everybody's going to agree with you, but don't on purpose make it as hard as possible for people around you. You want to generate favor with God and with man. You have to ask God, Lord, give me the wisdom to generate favor with people. The thing is, you've got to trust that um, people who God puts in authority know who needs to be hired who need you know what what who needs to be there I, I i like to say i don't get what i pay for i get what i pray for so i praise god like no one in this ministry i mean i think most people in our ministry get paid 10 percent of what they're worth and that's like still a lot for us what we pay is like a lot for us as a ministry because we really focus on feeding the poor and we don't want to be too heavy on the um uh, staff side but the the more competent the people are that you hire the bigger numbers you can handle because there are there are levels of competence you know there are levels so so some people can handle pressure where they look after 20 30 people a day some people can handle hundreds some people can handle thousands the captains of thousands captains of tens of thousands and captains of tens of thousands they are expensive you want someone who's going to help you feed 14,000 children a day and you want their full attention, you better make sure that they worry about nothing else in their life. When you get offended at what other people are being paid, it's because you don't understand their excellence is expensive. We're blessed as a ministry where we've got people volunteering here who are worth tens and tens of thousands of rands a month. They're like highly, 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 highly skilled. We can't afford them. We uh, And all we do is give some of them like food because you know they're champions 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 so sometimes we get what we pray for but most times you'll get what you pay for whoever has your ear has your heart whoever has your heart orders your steps keep your ears locked to the teachings of jesus daily on the overcomers wisdom session with the son of joy